welcome to Universal Energies and today with me is Rob Loomis. Lummis. Lummis. I aren't doing anything with it, don't worry. <laughs> now you're used to seeing Rob um, interviewing his guests and they've always been fascinating. But you know what? This is our second programme with Rob and he is utterly fascinating. We spent the whole programme just talking about your childhood, didn't we? <laughs> we did. Yeah. Yeah. But today we're going to be talking about guides and is it the way? Uh, the way? Well, we're not talking about the way, we're talking about the North American way. The North American way, thank you. And I've been waiting for this because I know Rob has um, lived with I have stayed with him, yes, I have, yes. Right. And, and, and I'm dying to hear about his guide as well, and, and just what that means. So, over to you, Rob, because do uh, you want to start with the guide? Well, thank you very much, Maureen, and it's always a pleasure on this uh, wet, grisly day, I must admit. Uh, but having said that, uh, a guide, there have been a lot talked about with guides. Mm. Uh, basically, when you come down and when you are born, depending on where you think you come from, uh, whether you think you come from spirit and you come down here, or whether you think you're hatched or whatever, it makes no difference. Can you be hatched? <laughs> Is that a joke? <laughs> uh, uh, it makes no difference, but you all have an inspire or a little voice with inside you, if you like. Okay. And uh, if we listen to it, our lives could be a lot better than they are. But rather than go on that link for of uh, a time, a guide is somebody uh, who will steer you and through your conscience. Uh, spirit comes to you through your conscience. Uh, so in other words, uh, when you have a decision to make and you have a feeling mm. in your solar plexus, mm. uh, which is about here, energy, uh, a yellow sort of energy, intellectual energy, you get that feeling here whether you should go or whether you shouldn't go. Right. And your guide is giving you that because you have free choice here. I myself, along with a lot of other people, have chosen to uh, trust their guides. And when you trust them, the decision you make, you know is right for you. Remember, there are no rights and no wrongs. Right. It's only the way you perceive things. Yeah. And that's what happened. So, I have a guide. My guide is called Samakai. Uh, you may, he is a North American uh, Indian, a brave, not a chief or anybody important, as he says. Mm. You may think that's a funny name for uh, an Indian. It's more Japanese, and it is. It is, isn't it? Yeah. The reason being is because when he, he showed me through different guises or phases in his life when he was on this physical platform here, this earth, he showed me different ways. So first of all, he was an Egyptian scribe in the, the temples of Heliposis, mm -hmm. which uh, we have said uh, is underneath, buried underneath Cairo now, mm -hmm. and there's not much left of it at all, apart from uh, one or two things, which we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. Then he showed me, as he's coming through there, he showed me coming up into the uh, as Tudors and the uh, Stuart periods, right. and he was very influential in in that period there too. And then we went through to the the Warlock period, whereby it was a, a witch finder generals, and he was that oh. kind of man there as well. He right. was a very spiritual man, mm. uh, uh, understanding that uh, whatever he did, he did it for the good of others and himself, of course, mm. which elevated him along and people listened to what he was saying. Then he came across and he showed me as a little urchin child in Victorian times. Gosh. Then he showed and I always saw her in the streets of Bath. Actually. It's a her? Yes, with a hoop on a, a boot in the hoop down oh, the yes. road. Yeah. Yeah. Her name was Emma and Emma stayed with me all through this one person here. Then he said to me, my penultimate incarnation was as a Japanese warrior, and that's how you're going to know me, and my name is Samako. His last incarnation on this earth was as a North American brave. I respect that, but he's given me the same name that he was when he was a 
Japanese warrior so that I could find this out. I researched all this. Right. I do not believe anything that anybody tells me, especially what's happening in my head unless I find. So I went to the libraries, I looked at the periods, I found out, and there he was, uh, uh, in name in the last bit, but understanding about the, the, the priests of the temples, etc. Et so, this he is... He had six lives. Yes, he did, yeah. I always thought it was seven. Uh, is you, that Buddhist? It, I think that's it all depends what teaching you, mm. you have. And yes, a Buddhist is seven lives, mm. but uh, other, other people have uh, shorter existences, other people have more. Maybe that's because they have learned and they don't want to endure anymore and their soul is ready to go on the spiritual journey and not come back onto this earth plane anymore. So he'll never come back? He's not coming back anymore, no. no. Okay. So he came to me about 15, 16 years ago and I just happened to be walking uh, my dog along the seafront down the ferry. Oh, and yes. uh, the, yeah. uh, on solitude, I used to love it and down there and then, by, by the waves and the sort of, anyway, and there he was, he came to me and he said this, and he said that, and he showed me my path, what it was going to be here. Goodness. So, from that moment, uh, he came to me and he was with me and we just lived life as normal here, but he got me out of lots and lots of scrapes of things and I'd been in situations where I never thought I'd get out of it. Really? But, uh, 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 I got out of it anyway, maybe mundane things, and you know, I don't even think about it, but now I think about, or when I did think about it, I thought about the situation, and, ah, that could have been really this, that could have been that, they could have. Anyway, having said that, then I went to uh, uh, London, and uh, I was doing some physical work in London, uh, I saw what it went. he helped me in there, and he showed me a lot of way, and he said, we're going to write a book. So we did. We wrote this book and it's called A Mirror of Things to Come. I had a lot of physical people on this earth help me but uh, to do this because uh, I joke and uh, I just said that uh, my guide then became my spiritual spell checker because I wasn't very good at all. But having said that and uh, other people on this earth will resonate with that as well and probably um, laugh. Where is your um, book? My book? I don't know where it is now. In actual oh. fact, in actual fact, I had a workshop at the weekend and just diversing a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I told someone about the book and she said I'd love to get it. And then she bailed me yesterday to say that on Sunrise Books through Google, she managed to get a copy and they're oh, sending them wow. on. So there you go. Wow. Yeah. I'd love to see it. Actually. Well, I did bring it in once because another person interviewed me and they yeah. had the book. But anyway. Um, but, but I have said that. No, anyway. right. so, so this is the first time your guide actually spoke to you because you you say you've got a guide through your conscience, but this was more than that. Wasn't well, it? a conscience uh, uh, works well with your uh, with spirit. Mm. Spirit then comes through this little voice you have inside you. Yeah. And no matter what faith you believe in, you have something inside you that tells you and puts you on. You know. Yeah. Uh, the only uh, people will call that. Uh, that's where the saying comes: blind faith, blind, blind faith. Because uh -huh. you're not actually got anybody physical there. Yeah. What you've done, you're listening to yourself here, yeah. right. and then, and and it's doing you good. So if it's doing you good, you carry on with it, and you're trusting him. And that's exactly what I did with my guide here. He had spoken to me before, but now I really trusted him. And in the book, there are uh, several things that there. Uh, 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 like, I've had things go missing that I needed to find desperately. We've turned the house upside down, me and my uh, ex-wife, we turned it upside down. We come to the last, the first thing that we had done, mm. we did that again and there was what we needed, crisp, right on top. And uh, I couldn't believe, well I couldn't believe it, but my wife couldn't believe it. And cynically she said, uh, well, if you've got a guy, let him say something. So she, he said out loud, I just opened my mouth and came out and said, that will show her. And that's why. But little things like that, I just take it as blase here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask one other thing? You asked. Guy? Yeah, because this is fascinating. If you ask for something, 
and you desperately want something and you ask your guide, is there a chance that they'll do it for you? I don't mean the lottery numbers, I don't mean anything too selfish, but something that maybe you desperately need. Will they listen? Will they help? They will Can listen. they help? They will listen. They can't help physically because they're not physical. They only give you the essence of themselves. Ah. Um, if anything's right for your higher self, then it will happen. Really? So if you are really passionate mm. and it's there for your higher self, and it's to do with others maybe, to help produce uh, mm. their own feelings within inside themselves, it will happen. What we do today is we live in a material world, we want everything to happen yesterday. Mm. Yeah. And unfortunately yeah. that doesn't happen. Right. You know? So you, uh, the old saying is you just let it go up to the in the ether and yeah. wait for the answer when the time is right. Right. So that you can have uh, your wishes answered. Your if wishes. They're right if if wishes. they're for your better, for mm. your better higher self, they will happen. Things will happen. But in everyday life, people mm. want miracles today, and they don't see that miracles are there in front of them every day. Oh. The birds that fly. Yes. Yeah. The, the flowers that grow. Yeah. The great majestic trees. Go and hug a tree. I've done that. Yeah. 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 The, the babies that have been born. Is that not a miracle? Do you know what? You put a perspective on things, don't you? Yeah, that, that's that's a wonderful perspective. What it is, is that uh, we, we are so used to thinking about miracles that we have been told and educated about all our lives mm. and they happen every day here. There are some wonderful healers out there, not spiritual people, doctors and nurses mm. oh. that help and they heal people. Yeah. The next question I hear you get, yeah. why do we get sick then? <laughs> We get sick. He reads minds as well. We get sick because what we do in this life is that we we are very uh, judgmental, and being judgmental, whatever we think happens. We are put a thought away from spirit. So what we think happens. Whatever deed we do, we have to have a thought behind it, negative or positive. Right. So whatever we do, whatever we say, has to have a thought behind it. It doesn't just come out, it's a thought behind it. If we are positive, and we give positivity and love, if you like, which mm. is the only thing that sustains us here on this earth, really. Yeah. If we give that out to others, and we excel it and uh, let it vibrate from ourselves, people see that and it's like cogs that go through and then just build up and build up and build up and we get that. Wouldn't you think that'd be a lovely place to live with anybody? Yes, yes. You know? But we're not like that. We live in an age where Bobby jump over you to get where I want, Jack. And that can't go on. Does that make you ill? Are you saying you that that affects yes, your health? It will do, yeah. So your a thought. body is a temple. It is, absolutely. That's really? where the thought comes from. Hey, gosh, yeah. gosh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know. Getting back to what we were saying, yeah, we're sorry. sidetracked a bit there, It's so interesting. I'm sorry I keep going off, right. don't I? I had the opportunity to uh, work over in Holland as a, a medium oh. and doing workshops. I actually went, uh, was introduced by somebody over there and then we went to uh, a certain place over there and that's got my, me to introduce and then through the media from there it was a case of that I got invited to go back over there uh, mm. several years later. So I went over there and while I was over there I got invited to uh, a friend of mine um, for a friend of friend, mm. I met some na Native Americans over there. They asked me to go over there, if I would, and perhaps spend some time with them sometime, if, you, if I was interested. 
you have to be invited to do this, which we'll go through in the mm -hmm. So that was so really several good. years later, when I had sorted myself out, I was on my own. Uh, I hadn't really got a, a partner as such. I was living in a caravan, a bit of a nomad. It was good. I don't mind that at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was working with vulnerable people, so my energies were very heightened as well. Mm -hmm. I, just off the top of my head, sent an email out, and I got invited to go over there. So I went over there. Over where? Over to Holland, back over to right. Holland. It's Holland, a German border. Right. Uh, Zoot is the place. Oh. I went over there, uh, and uh, anyway, went over there, and they all live in today... Uh, like uh, secluded caravan sites, and they all drive four by fours. But that's not the point. The point is that they are family orientated, and mm. you get the grandmothers and grandfathers living all together, and they live separately, and they still carry on with ancestral traditions. Do they? So I was, uh, when I first went there, I was asked to walk with the elders. So you walk with them first, and they instruct you with different things and ask you about different things. And I stayed with them for a little while, and in that time they instructed me on the medicine wheel, how to do that and what it was for. The, the intention is more than the actual physical that is there. They showed me about uh, the bones, which we call the runes. Which are the same oh, called, the runes, which are the yeah. same, same sort of thing. The runes are very ancient, so yeah. are the bones are there. Okay. They showed me about taking from Mother Earth and replenishing. They showed me about lots of different aspects of their life. And it resonated with me. Mm. And the basic of the life was Mother Earth. She provides only what we require, what we a want is a different matter altogether. What we require is food in our tummy, roof over our head, and the love <coughs> of our ancestors around us. We don't need anything but the rest of wants. Right. In life. So I came back, and uh, I then got invited to go over to um, Scotland to do uh, a silent retreat at the first of five, which is uh, was right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. It's like a big uh, martello place. Gosh. And I went over there and did yeah. that, but that's for another thing there, <laughs> another interview. But <clears throat> getting back to the guys here now, okay, everybody has this guy, but not a lot of people recognise it, because unfortunately, if you listen to yourself, you trust yourself, mm -hmm. outside influences don't matter too much, and that's your guide. Right. Don't put big, fantastic names on it. Like someone said to me the other day, if we've all got guys, they all seem to be prominent people, like uh, uh, kings or queens yeah. or Native Americans. Well, they're usually Native Americans, aren't they? Or samurai warriors. Yeah. 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 Or Egyptian priests. But could there be a reason for that? Because they were maybe wiser people? Uh, do you have to be wise? When a person's energies, which we'll talk about at that another mm. time, when a person's energies are on one le uh, level, if you like, mm. okay, uh, they're, they're here and now, most of the time. Right. When we start to, and we've talked about that before, going away with the fairies, if you like. <laughs> when your mind's in a different dimension, mm. your energies are heightened. And guides can come to you a lot easier then. And yes... They can be your aunts, your uncles, your siblings that have gone over. Mm -hmm. But because these people come to you, they've had a lot of instruction through maybe past lives, if you believe that, on this earth, mm -hmm. or spiritual lives in spirit. So they, they can come down and give you, and they are more apt to give you understanding and peace, harmony, mm -hmm within yourself, oh. you know? but it's not necessary for them to be elevated to whoever they are, uh, prominent people in life, it can be just as easy for you to have your guides as your loved ones and siblings. So everybody has that? Everybody has that. That inner wisdom. If guides are not resonating with 
you, my friends, just think about the little voice of conscience that you have. Everybody, no matter who they are, has that. Some people uh, choose not to listen to it, and that's fair enough. There's no wrongs and no rights, remember. It's mm. just the way we perceive things. Mm. My belief is that, and I try to distill this on other people uh, with great respect, is that when you pass from this life here, and you will go back home to spirit, so therefore you came from there to start with, if you like, you'll go back home to spirit here. All your life may be condensed into a few days before you pass over. It's like a filing cabinet opening in your mind. And all those, um, maybe you call them lessons that you've learned, prominent lessons mm. that you've learned, from very small to going through the marriage process and the life and the grandchildren and all, all the rest of it, all those wonderful things that you have learned. And all those things that are not quite so wonderful, but you have the feelings so you've learned from them, yeah. they all come back. That's why when your loved ones come back through mediums, you know them because they'll give you some inclination of who they are because of the memories that they bring back. Oh. You know? Yeah. As for the descriptions, they will come back most of the time of how they were because they've they're not like that now, no. because they, we all go back to a certain level, prime oh. in your life. But if they came back like that, you wouldn't recognise them, would you? So they, they have the ability to, to be who you remember them. Yeah, right? they are, they're like that. Yeah. So. That's nice. We, yeah, all, we all have the childlike inside us now, hmm. but we suppress it all because that's not the done thing. Oh. If you do something... Uh, silly, yeah. you almost become a person of ridicule for somebody else mm. because it's not the done thing. Right. You know? Those people that are really strong sages and priests of a higher authority mm. in this world here are not afraid of what they say, what they do, or where they've been because they know that they are speaking their truth. Right. Yeah, very strong. Yeah. So, how would, uh, do you benefit from? I mean, I know you've got the goodness. Sorry. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I'm sorry you heard that. I think we're back on again. We're back on again. Yes. So, if your conscience is your guide, so those beans you... I had this morning. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> more open than most people. <laughs> Sorry about the noise. Let me just uh, clarify that and so we don't uh, uh, glorify the situation. Mm. If you choose to listen to yourself, yes. take away the guides and conscience and everything else, you are respecting your higher self. You are doing what you know for yourself mm. is what you want to do. Remember there's no rights and wrongs. So if you say there is a right and wrong, that's right for you. Okay? Mm. That's just the same. Just the same as a guide. Because right. something said to you inside that this is the pathway we're going, but we're not going on that one. Oh, right. It's simple. Right. We glorify uh, uh, spirituality. Mm. The same as they glorify religion, and spirituality is not to be glorified. It's just one of those things of everyday life. If, as I said before, if you want to be now about spiritual yourself, go out in a garden and look around. Yeah, that's yeah, where all the spiritual. Yeah. Oh, are they? Not in a church no. with someone telling you. Yeah. That's not spiritual at all. What that is is dictation and control. And fear. 
Yes, yes. So is that the that's a pagan sort? Uh, everything. Uh, I Pagans mean, are very. The, I mean, the word pagan, mm. uh, which I resonate with because Mother Earth energies. Right. Uh, the word pagan, everything was pagan before uh, Jesus Christ came along. Yeah. No matter what it was. So you can see the way the church has decimated what people were doing beforehand and taken over to a situation and even not even truthfully interpreting the words of the great sage which was Jesus Christ. Mm. They haven't even been adapted properly. Oh. What it's been, oh, uh, uh, Do you know what we're getting off onto what I think is going to be another programme, you know? Uh, yeah. we, we talked about this earlier before we started recording and fascinating subjects, maybe one we could touch on on another programme. I think we're going to have you here for ages and ages. Just before, just before we leave, let's get back to where we first started. Yeah. Well, that's why we're talking about guys here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, don't emphasise and put dramatic names on guides to start with. Okay. Listen to yourself. That is your guide. Know whatever you're supposed to do, mm. you will get a feeling to do it. That's your guide coming through and giving you that feeling. Yeah. Know that there's no wrongs and no rights. Just the way you think it and perceive it. And as my dad used to say, if you can't say anything nice about someone, mm. don't say anything at all. <laughs> yes, it's always a good saying. I've got to say it, though. If you listen to the no rights and wrongs, what happened with Hitler then? You know, this. Um, are you saying all guides are good? What I'm saying is, because there's no rights and no wrongs, what a certain person does for their own material gain mm. is their right, which is our wrong, mm. if you like. We can't get involved with individual people because at the end of the day then you're always going to get people that go against whatever you're doing, mm. whatever you're going. The dramatic situation of what's happened with, uh, uh, we're talking about uh, in the Second World War, had happened many, many times before. Has it? And throughout life. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah, absolutely. It was nothing new, right. you know. Man invented the gun. Mm. He invented the war because he was wanting to take something from somebody else that is theirs to start with. Right. That's all it is. Basic things here. So these are people not listening. Yeah, their, people their create this. Nothing to do with uh, a, a spiritual life at all. Right. Nothing to do at all. So all it's for material gain. So all spirits are good. I'm are not good. saying all spirits. I didn't say that. No, no I didn't say no. that. I said all the spirits uh, are there. People are... are we get into the, uh, another evolve here, like uh, rescuing the spirits and things like that. But there are spirits that uh, don't know where they're going. Right. Have no idea where they're going at the moment. It's almost like they're floating. They're not too sure. Right. And we have people who come along and rescue them. What they call, really? Yeah. Spirit rescues. Wow. They come along and do that. I've done that. I've done that myself. But having said that, it's a, that's in that's a different interview altogether. Okay. All, all around there. We've got so many different interviews but, to uh, have. But uh, yeah, mm. it's uh, it. What I try to do is portray and get it over to people that the more you learn, the more you feel good, the better you are, and the person that was changes. So you can change yourself. You do. Everybody. Nobody can change you apart from yourself. Right. You know, if you yeah. do a bad turn, yes. you know, who's going to change it into a good turn if not yourself? Right. But you can have help? Oh, of course you can. Yeah. But the help is drawn to you mm. by yourself. So in other words, that, that uh, if you are um, down and you maybe suffer from uh, this, that and something else, or you're a bit anxious and something else, there are people around 
that will be drawn to you because of your the way you are. You know, they'll be drawn to you. Yeah. Oh. You know, that's the same in spirit as well. Right. You know, if you are lost and you don't know where you're going, you know, people will come to you with this little voice inside you, if you like. You may well find solace by going through the, uh, the doors of a church. That's fair enough. Mm. What I say to you, research and find out for yourself. Mm. Don't just go through the doors of one establishment and say this is it, because they're lovely people. They may be wonderful people inside. Mm. But experience something else so you know. Mm. You know? Right. What, what doesn't resonate with you, take little bits away from that. So I put it in a little seed pot right. and then take something from someone, put it in the seed and before long all those seeds will go together oh. and that will make the person who are, you are now. Wow, That's, uh, that sounds very hopeful. <laughs> it, it does. It I, think life is, hope. uh, I think life is, I don't say it's hopeful, but life is there mapped out in front of you and it's up to you through your choices what you want to do. There are crossroads in everybody's lives, so if you make a bad decision for yourself, change it. <laughs> See, you know, isn't that a wonderful way to finish? Mm -hmm. I think that's a wonderful way to finish. Now, I know that this is not going to be the end, is it, Rob? I mean, next time, I think you're going to come up with something fantastic. Was it when you were living with the monks? We'll go. I didn't live with the monks. I stayed with them. You stayed with uh, them in the silent order. But we can well, go on and talk about that. Yeah. Uh, Fascinating. We'll, uh, maybe we'll talk about uh, uh, one or two other things anyway. Yeah. But having said that, then uh, uh, do keep tuning into the the mm. programs, uh, hey guys, and uh, it'll give you some idea and give you the tools so you can find out for yourself. Don't take anybody's opinions just like that as fact. Go out. Research it, find it out for yourself, listen to other people and take on board what is good for you, resonates for you, and what isn't, put it to one side till it is. How sensible is that? Thank you so much. I've You're really welcome. enjoyed it. I've enjoyed today. And I hope you will come back for um, episode three of the Life and Salts uh, of Spirit, Rob Loomis. Pleasure. Thank you so much for coming and joining us and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.